Uh, you heard the comments from the San Francisco Fed's John Williams there, talking about the fact that we're as close to the Fed's mandate goals as we've ever been, according to him. Could we read that as this is the best that we're going to get in terms of inflation for a while, Burkhardt? Well, look, inflation seems gone for quite some time. And what's really killed inflation clearly isn't federal monetary policy, but it's the Internet. It's the sharing economy, the network economy. It's the uber deflationary companies like Uber, Airbnb, Amazon and the likes who've really transformed most companies in most sectors into price takers rather than price setters. So with very little inflation in sight, John Williams is, of course, absolutely Absolutely right. And this time, this year, monetary policy in the US will all be about walking the talk. And that means two rate hikes, as they have guided the public to expect, are likely to come forward. But that's a small step in not a big picture, because the big picture is capital market yields will remain low for longer in the absence of inflation and also in the presence of structural excess demand for long dated government securities from aging populations whose pension funds are in dire needs of long dated government securities. Yeah, Burkhardt, certainly a lot of people saying that it is those demographics uh, weighing on the longer end of the yield curve. But I just want to bring up this chart. You can't see it. It's G hashtag BTV 6558. But all it shows is the 10-year Treasury yields. Look, we're at 2.25%. You know, we're, we're near those lows for 2017. And it's tracked against Treasury volatility, which has also been coming down. So the Treasury market basically stuck in a doldrum, and we've had the yields coming down. Are investors underestimating the impact of Fed tightening, given where yields are right now? Well, one thing that investors might be underestimating is the risk or opportunity, whatever way you want to look at, that U.S. capital market yields may be trading in a very low range for a considerable period of time, that is to say, for a few more years. That's a scenario which investors may not be fully pricing in or be prepared for. And it is actually a serious pro possibility when you look at the medium term outlook, despite the central bank rate hikes that we do expect for the remainder of this year, as said by John Williams. Yeah, Burkhardt, just very quickly, I've talked to a lot of people about the fact that the Phillips curve just doesn't seem to be quite working. If we do get a sudden uptick in inflation, what could that do to bond markets? I, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I got the question, but when you talk about the Phillips curve, a concept that we certainly all learned in theory in academia, it brought to my mind the dictum by Ben Bernanke, who was quoted saying that some things work in practice, but they don't work in theory. So I, mm. I wouldn't rely too much on theory because it works sometimes and at other times it doesn't.